Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this latest installment of the Centurus Knowledge Series. Today, we're excited to be presenting to you on the topic of Cognos Framework Manager versus Data Modules. We'll do a comprehensive comparison and discuss some key feature gaps. Our agenda today, after some quick introductions, we'll do an introduction of both Framework Manager and Data Modules, do provide some comparisons between the two, discuss some key framework manager model issues versus data modules and demonstrate some solutions to give you an idea of what that looks like in real time and then stick around for the centurus overview for those of you who may not be familiar with who we are and what we do some additional almost entirely free resources and then at the end we always have our great q a so again get your questions in the q a and we'll get to those at the end of the presentation so joining me today, I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Pedro Inning. Pedro joined Centurus back in 2010 and brings over 20 years of BI and data warehousing experience to his role. In addition to being a regular contributor to our Centurus knowledge series here, he's been instrumental in implementing data warehousing systems from scratch and has experienced the evolution of the BI industry through several iterations of BI products, including Cognos, MicroStrategy, and Tableau. My name is Mike Weinhauer. I wear a number of different hats here at Centurus, one of them being the MC for the Knowledge Series, and I'm pleased to be here hosting you today. And with that, I'll hand the floor and the mic over to Pedro. Pedro, the floor is yours. Okay, hi everybody. So today, Framework Manager versus Data Modules. Uh, it's worth mentioning that Cognos has been around for quite a while, since the mid 90s, and it has quite a bit of a modeling legacy as, as products that have been around for a while and have morphed with the industry contain so we all remember uh, modeling with transformer and then framework manager and with dmr we just try to make framework manager look like transformer who can never forget dynamic cubes and anybody using that one out there <laughs> so dynamic cubes hasn't been used for a while ibm has kind of put that aside and now we have cognos data modules with the cognos analytics 11 series and things like data sets so the product has evolved quite a bit over the years, and we always have to kind of change our ways and, and things and, and how to work with these tools. But one of the, obviously, the, I think the top questions out there that will probably exist uh, right off the top for people who are using Cognos quite a bit and have moved over to 11, 11.1, and have come from a, a large Cognos 10 installation is, should I replace all my existing framework manager models and package with data modules? Now, IBM has really pushed data modules. It doesn't really, really advertise framework manager as part of the 11 uh, a feature set, but it's there. And we're kind of taking the point of, you know, if you've got existing framework manager production packages that are working fine, you know, in production, you've got a 500 reports against them. They're fairly complicated packages and they're working okay. You know, there may not be a need to port a one-for-one -one implementation to a data module. It may not be worth the cost benefit. And IBM has no plans to remove product support for Framework Manager. Uh, it's not gonna be deprecated, uh, much like Transformer, which has been around since the mid 90s, Transformer is in there in its product line. It can be used with Cognos Analytics 11. The same can be said for Framework Manager. Now, as you look across your existing models and framework packages, there might be some opportunity to take maybe portions of it, and there might be some packages that you might want to really port over so that you can take advantage of some of the new functionality with data modules. But I would say that you don't want to take a complete blanket approach and say, I have to move over because IBM's not, <clears throat> not gonna support this, uh, at this particular product tool any longer. So that's just kind of like a general statement. I wanted to get that question right off the top. <clears throat> so, but if you are gonna be starting new modeling tasks, you might wanna give a serious look at data modules. Um, if, if some of your modeling tasks don't need some of the features that are still kind of considered gaps, you might want to give it a serious look. And in fact, some of the product managers at IBM have even says, have even stated that you look at data modules, maybe start with data modules for new projects <clears throat> until you get to the point where you, you realize that you go through your requirements, maybe it's not the right tool yet for the job. 
So let's talk quickly about Cognos Framework Manager. I'm sure that a lot of you out there who are Framework Manager gurus, developers, been using it for quite a long time. But in case there's some people out there who wanted to see what's available in terms of across the entire Cognos landscape, let's talk about these quick bullets about a Framework Manager. It's been the primary modeling tool since Cognos Report Net, for those of you who remember that initial release of Cognos uh, on the web, then Cognos 8 and Cognos 10. And it's still widely used in Cognos 11 and 11.1. In fact, there are a lot of customers out there who have migrated from Cognos 10 to Cognos 11 who really still only use the framework manager package model paradigm uh, where the where the where the modeling is really IT controlled and centric, and they have not even scratched the surface of using some of the newer uh, modeling tools like data modules within Cognos 11. And historically, Framework Manager has been that IT centric tool used by developers and data modules, uh, data <laughs> data modelers. I'm sorry, and it was never really meant for end users. You know, but I'm sure there's some organizations that have tried. They've actually let end users get Framework Manager installed on a PC and try to do some packages, but I think in general some users, power users, have kind of thrown their hands up in the air and said this is too complicated for what I want to do because I don't need all that complex functionality that Cognos Framework Manager has had because its development genesis has been more for a very centrally maintained metadata structure for developers and data model modelers. It's kind of like from an era from the single source of truth data warehouse. We all remember this was the the really the Hingola, I think of I mean, even 10, 15 years ago. We need a data warehouse that's gonna have everything in it, that's gonna have a pure, pristine metadata layer, and everybody will go to that for all their analytics. And as we know now, um, we do need data warehouses, that's definitely there. We do need some controlled governance on metadata on the data warehouses, but I think it's become kind of one of your new sources, one of your sources to newer BI analytic processes to uh, your data scientists and your power users who actually maybe extract data from that data warehouse through a framework package and then integrate it in other tools that allow them to do data, data modeling, much like Tableau and Power BI. You know, they've come from the perspective like, uh, Users want to model. Users want to integrate different sources of data. Now, they don't want to be hamstrung by a data warehouse where it takes months, weeks, whatever, to add more tables when I can go and get the tables myself. So it's a, it's, it's a kind of a changing landscape, and it's good to be aware of that. And also the fact that IBM has stated there are, will be no future enhancements for this product. It might be a good time to start looking at when, how, can I use the newer modeling tools like data modules in Cognos Analytics 11? Now, Cognos data modules itself, on the converse, is a web-based tool, unlike Framework Manager, which requires installation on the PC desktop. It's end-user focused and allows the end user to do their own data blending, a term that you always hear in Tableau, we can data blend. Well, that's what data modules can do. It's also a good modeling tool from even basic modeling, much like Framework Manager against a relational database. And there's some transformation things you can do within the tool. And this tool debuted initially with Cognos 11.0. And it's really IBM's response to the whole data democratization trend in the industry, where you know IT and, and is not the real gatekeeper is is a gatekeeper to a certain point of data, but we need to be able to have end users, power users, data scientists access to more data and have a more agile approach to uh, blending and data modeling. So it's IBM's response, I believe, to tools that really kind of got the mind share over the last five, ten years, like Tableau and Microsoft Power BI. And for those of you who might be struggling out there with uh, people in your organization using Tableau and Power BI and maybe just using Cognos Analytics as an extraction tool, allowing users to use the newer tools within Cognos will help you maintain that foot footprint if that's something you're interested in doing and trying to maybe standardize a little bit more on Cognos Analytics and give it a lot more use across the uh, end user community. 11.1 significantly closed 
some and a lot of the technical gaps between FM and data modules. So you modelers out there who have looked at data modules in 11.0, threw your hands up in the air and say, well, I can't do this, can't do that. 11.1 was the release that really focused on that. We're gonna talk about some of those things here. Um, and of course, all future developmental resources within IBM will be focused on data module enhancements. So data modules will continually get better and framework manager will be, will be staying exactly where it is in terms of its current uh, development life cycle. This slide is just uh, really trying to show you that data modules is an integration point of many different sources now. Uh, on the right are the data modules. We basically have databases that data modules can connect to directly and bring in tables through data server connections. We can actually use data modules to go against your FM packages if you need to. So if you have a lot of FM packages out there already, you still want to leverage data modules for certain use cases, you could connect directly to the FM packages that are out there, which will eventually go back to your databases. And one of the big things, of course, is uploaded files. Your users can upload your Excel files, CSV files into data modules for data sets, uh, for, uh, data modules for data blending. And then the new data set feature uh, up there on the upper right uh, allows people to extract data from uh, Cognos database, uh, from databases that are exposed to Cognos, create subsets of data that are now stored on Cognos for faster, faster performance and integrate that into data modules. And, uh, and what's really interesting too, data modules can feed other data modules. So the permutations is quite large of what you can do. And, and it's just really a matter of architecting it properly, but it allows you that functionality, so it allows you a lot of different uh, ways to model and integrate and blend and cleanse. So the, the key thing, and a lot of FM folks are waiting for, potentially, uh, what are the, what in the current state, 11.1 .1, release six, what are data modules still missing that might stop you right now anyhow? to use data modules? Um, well, first of all, it does not do DMR, dimensionally modeled relational models at this point. Now, for those of you who uh, have never used it, this may not be a point that you care about. Um, personally, I think uh, DMR models uh, are not necessary anymore, uh, especially with the way a lot of the uh, features are available in Cognos, like navigation pass, you could kind of simulate that hierarchical model and the DMR models require a different skill set in reporting. So you've, you've got a certain set of report developers who can uh, write reports against relational models, but DMR is another different set of skill sets you have to have. But again, if you, if, you are, if you have DMR requirements, you need to use it, data modules still do not, still do, not do that. Object-based security, and I hope they really fix this one up soon, uh, that doesn't exist still in data modules. Um, you want to hide a particular table or a particular field from within the model of data modules and only expose that to certain groups. Group A can see this table, group B can't see that table. That doesn't exist, so you have to do workarounds around that. And I'm thinking this is going to be on an upcoming release. I would love to see that there. Uh, we could simulate packages better with that when object-based security is in, in place. Uh, I don't know how many people have, out there have used team-based modeling. I personally have only used team-based modeling once where uh, multiple modelers can model against the same FM model using model of branches and merges. Uh, that's not in there. I don't know if that's going to be in there. Uh, but again, I don't know how many teams out there have actually used that. But if you absolutely have to have that, uh, that's not in there. Another big one is parameter maps. This allows for the use in one particular uh, use case for multilingual packages, depending upon your locale of Cognos. So it could tell you, where it could, it could, based on where the locale of Cognos is set up, if I'm using it for English, if I'm using it for France, it could dynamically change the views of the data through parameter maps. That's not in there. Another case where I've seen parameter maps used is for fairly complex row level data security implementations. You might have security tables. You might have to have some fancy macro substitutions in your query subjects. 
uh, and then leverage parameter maps for that. That's currently not in there. I think that's on the development timeline, but that's not in there either. Um, from a style perspective, FM style namespaces, packages, that whole way we model an FM is different in data modules. This can become somewhat simulated, uh, but it's a different kind of thinking. If you're trying to do a one for one from framework manager to data modules, it's not really there. But I think some of the functionality is there through some of the newer features that are in their data modules, and we're going to go ahead and discuss that. But what do data modules do? What data modules do that framework manager can't do? And some of these are pretty big. Because as the development of data modules continues, the gap between data modules versus framework manager gets bigger. The number one big one that I can see is the easy integration of uploaded files like Excel and CSV. Can't do that in Framework Manager. And a lot of the times, uh, your data warehouse or your model out there in, in the databases that are centrally maintained and governed uh, don't have other things that uh, users need to be able to do analytics on. They might have an Excel spreadsheet with a lot of different kind of roll-ups from accounting codes to job categories or things like that that they maintain. And they want to be able to blend and join that in their queries. So what happens is they get the extract from Cognos, bring it down to Excel. They've got their uh, roll-up file on a different tab, and they do their VLOOKUPs there. Well, now with this, uh, we can have end users bring those files up and then do the data blending within data modules there. Simple data cleansing is also built in uh, for, uh, for, da for data modules. We can uh, create data groups in that area. We can... Uh, quickly make uppercase, lowercase, conversions, uh, things like that are kind of built in to data modules. Easy hierarchy creation, so navigation paths where I could go uh, create my hierarchy from product line to product type to product within the model itself. So the natural drill down is in there when you write reports or do dashboards, that's already built in the data modules. Automatic creation of relative time filters are now in there. Uh, I have a separate webinar that kind of shows you how to do that. You could look it up on the Centaurus site. Uh, this has always been kind of a head scratcher within Framework Manager to kind of do this with complex filters, maybe some database changes on the time dimension. But this automatically is done for you with data modules once you put that in. And the plugin is fairly simple. With the use of data sets, you could bring data sets in and as you use data sets, extracts, data extracts from Cognos itself, um, as, you, as users use it, they go into in-memory. So these highly formatted Parquet files will be placed in memory on the Cognos server, and they, they kind of age out in a round-robin fashion, but automatically that's built in once you integrate data sets into your, into your data module. Data grouping we mentioned, and web-based interface. The web-based interface, I think, to me, is one of a, a good thing and a bad thing, especially for those of you who have used Framework Manager for quite a while, because the PC is uh, uh, has a lot more finer control of, of, of things like modeling tasks. But with the web-based interface, you don't have to download uh, a program. So uh, I think the web-based interface has come a long way since 11.0 release, but I think that particular uh, piece of the modeling tool is going to ke keep getting better and better. Okay. So what, what this webinar is going to address in terms of a demo are things that typical, there's typical FM modeling tasks that have been maybe more of an issue within data modules, or they weren't there at 11.0, and uh, you might want to see how we can maybe work around that or have the new features kind of remedy that. Um, well, like I mentioned, the web UI is not as precise and snappy as FM, but it's getting better. The three demos we're going to kind of do is the fact that uh, FM does not have the con or data modules do not have the concept of layers and namespaces and model query subjects, alias shortcuts for time dimension type role playing things and determinants. Okay, so we're going to go talk about that real quick. So namespaces and model query subjects. So the typical FM paradigm of layers and namespaces are missing in data modules. You know, I want a physical layer. I want to be able to hide that. How can I publish a centrally controlled data module? On the right, you see, and after working with data modules for quite a bit, I, I keep looking back at Framework Manager, and I look at it, it looks pretty complex, actually, if I was an end user. 
So those namespaces are, aren't there, but for those of us who do Framework Manager every day, this is something that maybe stops me from wanting to do this. So let's go over to Cognos right now. Okay, so this is actually, we're running 11.1, .1, release six. And for those of you who haven't seen it, um, there's some cleanup that they've done. Some of the icons look um, a little bit different. I think it looks a lot better. They've tightened it up. And we're gonna go over here and create a new data module right away. Okay, I'm gonna go into my data source connections, data servers, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Great Outdoor Sales database that's available uh, with Cognos. I'm gonna select my tables, and I'm gonna pick the order details, the order header, the product table, uh, the product line table, and let me expand this out a little bit here, the product name lookup table, and the product type. So I've got details, header, product, line, name, and type. I'm gonna say okay. Brings us into data modules. In, if you haven't seen data modules in a while, there's been a lot of changes. Um, the relationship view is here. And right away, data modules will inherit the joins that are in the database if the joins are defined by pro, uh, foreign and primary key uh, constraints, and that's what it has done. You could delete them if you want. I'm gonna bring the product, maybe organize this a little bit better. Product name, look up over here. Product line, product type, okay? And then over here is order details and order header. So this is a typical scenario, right? Uh, this is more of an, maybe an OLTP type um, schema. And I've basically brought in my physical tables my database view, if you'd like, and I've got it over here. And generally what I wanna do is try to make this schema more presentable to the user and make it maybe more dimensional, right? So let's go through some of those uh, activities then. So for example, I wanna maybe really just have a sales fact table. Now with the newer release of data modules and 11.1, .1, we, were, we were able to create custom tables. The newest release, and I think it was five, they have custom tables over here, so you can kind of see what they are. But I'm gonna create a custom table across the two tables, details and header with new table, and I'm gonna create a view. When I create a view of the tables, it's gonna inherit the joins that are physically already created across those two tables. If they're not joined, I can create a join view here as well. There's a lot of different areas where I can actually uh, uh, create different views of tables. We're gonna go ahead and create a view of those tables. And I'm gonna create those uh, view by just clicking finish. And right away, here is my new view of the tables. This is kind of new to release five custom tables. If I click on this, it shows me what those tables are made up of, okay? And also new to release five is the ability, and this was a big ask by FM modelers, the query information underneath that. So this didn't exist for a while, and a lot of FM modelers threw their hands up and they were, if I can't see what the query is made up of that view, I can't have fine-grained control over that, okay? So over here, it shows you the fact that it did inherit the join across those two tables. It shows you the SQL. So that's kind of new, that's kind of really, what it, these features have been added in to kind of address the gaps that FM has versus data modules, or data modules has versus FM. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this table to sales fact. And you can see by the icon, it's a little different. So this is basically a view. And what basically this is, is a model query subject in a sense. I created a model query subject across order, header, and details. And I have it over here now. If I could really draw a line across this here, I have my physical namespace, layer, and here's my presentation layer in a sense. Now I wanna flatten these tables out here also because I want to make a product dimension so people don't have to go to multiple tables. I could do a shift click over this, it highlights it over here, it highlights it here, right click, and I'm gonna create a table. Again, I'm gonna create a view of tables and say next. And I'm gonna select the columns I want because I don't want all these, these columns because 
these tables have a lot of support for multiple languages and I don't need all that stuff. Okay, so I just need, I'm gonna go clear all and deselect the columns. I'm gonna select product number, base, introduction date, discontinued date, okay? From product line, I'm gonna pick the product line code, the English name version of that. From product name lookup, I'm gonna want the, um, I want the product name and description. I'm also going to want the product language. We'll talk about why I want that in a second. And on product type, I'm going to want the product code, type code, and the product type English name. See, do I got everything in here? Product line, everything good. So I'm going to say finished. And there it shows you exactly what this view is made up of, this model query subject in a sense. I'm going to rename this guy to my uh, product dimension. Now, one thing I wanna show is the product name lookup, up, lookup table, and we have a grid panel where you can see the, ta the data. And that's one of the cool things about it that as I started working with this, of being, of being an FM model for quite a while, the ability to just kind of look at data really quickly is, is very nice, okay? You can see that uh, we have multiple product languages, for each product. And if I left it as that, I'd, I'd get double counting when I joined this to my sales fact table. So what wasn't apparent when I edited, when I created this view was, well, where do I put that filter? And it wasn't really in the create table dialog box. And where that is, is actually over here now in properties. So you see filters over here. I could put a filter on that view and uh, it allows me to say, well, what kind of filter do you want to put? Is it a column? Do you want me to do it on a column? Which I do, but it also has this expression editor now. And when I click add a filter for expression editor, it, it basically comes up with the expression editor for reports. And I could even use macro substitutions in here if I do want to do something more complex or things for this view, okay? So that's, that's in there now. But what I want to do is I want to add a filter based on the product language. I want to do add a filter, it's going to do distinct on that, and I only want to filter on English. And I'm going to say, okay. So right now, the icon now is showing you that we're filtering this product dimension view, and this is the filter we've added. And if we again look at the query information, we could see that it has put the where clause right there, okay? Going back to my relationships, the next thing I'm going to do is create a join relationship, a typical star schema type join from relationships here from product to sales fact, product number to product number, match my selected columns and say, okay. Okay. So I've done kind of the core thing of creating the start of a star schema. And within here, uh, within here, I could, much like a model query subject pro, uh, presentation layer, I could actually move my columns around. Within the product dimension here, uh, I could rename my columns, just get, get rid of that EN, for example. And uh, I could also, you know, create folders here for measures. Make it more, presentable to the end user, much like you do in the presentation layer in FM, like that, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and save this guy, save as in my live webinar folder. I have a backup there in case I need to, but I'm gonna call this, uh, you know, just DM2, for example. Save that off. And the other thing I'm gonna do uh, to make it more presentable to the users, I have all these tables here, which now these are views off of. In Framework Manager, I would create a package and hide the tables that I don't want people to see. Uh, what I could do here is create a new folder and we'll call this the physical layer. And I'm gonna just pop all these physical tables back into here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say hide. Okay, so now I'm gonna go save that one more time. I'm gonna go back out here. Now you, you could 
if you wanted to uh, click try it, it'll bring you right into the reporting tool. I'm going to go a little something different. I'm going to do what a typical user would do. I'm going to go to my DM2. I'm going to right click on this and say create report. So now my data module looks kind of like a package, right? And I've hidden the physicalness of that. And users can now write reports against this in an easier fashion because my measures are over here. My product dimension is all one flat dimension. And I want to maybe um, product line by um, product type, insert that. And I'm going to insert quantity. And then run that query. So there we go. OK. Let me go back to my data module. So we've, we've done that. So let's go back to my, what we were talking about. So namespace is a model query subject. Okay, it's not a one for one, right? But it's kind of a we've we've kind of filled some of the functional requirements to maybe do something like that. Um, the other option, as I say, how can I publish a simply controlled data module? What uh, some people might want to do is create their own data modules, but they don't want to know how to bring all the tables and do all the joins from a physical perspective. What we can do is maybe just publish out a data module that only has a physical layer in it. It, it's, it has everything there. Uh, we, may, we put a read-only stamp on that, and then people can work from there. So if I go over here, let me go to um, this folder. I have a physical layer over here. I could actually create another data module off of that. These are links. The end user will have no way to change that. But then I could leverage the ones, the links here that uh, uh, IT has created, and I could then create my table over here. Then I can create my sales fact this way. Now this becomes my sales fact folder or uh, query subject, model query subject. Okay, another alternative way to do it. Uh, in, in publishing centrally controlled type IT maintained data modules so that some of your more power users, your data scientists, whatever, can use those and create their own data modules and build their own presentation layer on top of that, okay? Um, so as you saw, one thing I, uh, that I kind of kind of glossed over, I kept changing this and saving it. I went to the reporting tool right away. I didn't have to publish a package, right? I saved it. I published the package. Uh, I saved it. I went to the reporting tool and I wrote my own reports real quickly. So the prototyping, the agileness of the tool uh, is much faster than obviously framework manager where I have to model everything on the PC. I've got to set up my package. I got to publish it. You know, and then I go back into Cognos, and then I look at the package, and you know, that whole thing is all within the web tool. Okay. That's another differentiating factor. Okay, let's go back to our slide deck real quick. The next one here is the concept of alias shortcuts. This is a very important piece of modeling that uh, modelers love to use. So if you look at the framework manager package model over there, we have the sales fact. They've got two dates over there. They have the order date and they have the ship date. And I need to be able to analyze across uh, two different time dimensions. I got one physical time dimension table. Uh, and in Framework Manager, I was able to right click and create an alias shortcut off that physical time dimension and use that and leverage that. Okay, there is no right click create alias shortcut in uh, data modules, but let's go back to data modules again. So. I'm going to bring in my time dimension um, over here, add more tables. I'm going to look for it. And again, the, the, C, the search is pretty nice. It's pretty quick. Time dimension. Okay. I'm going to say, okay, there's my time dimension. Um, the one thing I also want to mention as a side, uh, from a maintenance perspective, uh, release six got really good to help you from a usability to maintain these modules because what we didn't really have before is a way to reload the metadata uh, to see what tables, what we have in our data module versus the physical tables. Here in our sources, we see all the physical tables that are available. Uh, I'm gonna go to my time dimension over here and I'm gonna 
maybe delete some of these fields. I don't need these fields. From the physical table that I brought in, there's a new feature in here which shows unused items. And if I expand my time dimension over here and scroll down, these aren't there. So if I did not, if I deleted them here, I could actually now individually from a field perspective, just drag it in. Before it was a real pain to kind of get that done. And also before, if somebody physically, if your DBA changed the, uh, a table and added more fields. It was hard to refresh that. I had to go back to the data source connection and refresh it. Uh, well, now you have a right click here and you can say reload metadata. Okay, so another FM modeling uh, issue was, now it's too hard to maintain. I, uh, the fields come in, it's really hard to bring in a new fields on that. Okay, so that was another thing that was kind of fixed and basically made your, your life easier to use, okay? All right, so back to the original thing, the alias shortcut. I have a time dimension over here. I want to be able to create alias shortcut. Well, it's not there, but we can leverage this whole concept of custom tables. We've already created a couple of these. We can go to the time dimension, say new table. We'll create a view of the table. And I don't want all these fields for the purposes of this demo. I'm gonna clear all. I want only the day date, I want the month key, I want the current month, I want the quarter key, I want the current quarter, I want the current year, and maybe I want the uh, month English name. Okay, I'm gonna bring that in, say finish. Now I've got a view, now my views are kind of building up, I have another view over there, okay? Um, and the one thing about this, it brought the current month number and current quarter number in as measures by default because it's numeric. Framework Manager had a really nice feature where if I did that and dragged down the attribute column and it'll change that. Well, we have something similar here as well. I could multi-select the at, uh, a column over here. Go over to my properties pane, which is over here, and change the usage over here to say attribute, which is what I wanna do, okay? And I wanna make this uh, the ship dimension. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rename this uh, the ship date dimension. Now, I also want to be able to have an order date dimension here as well. I could do the same thing. I could create a custom view off time dimension. But there's a really nice copy and paste type feature over here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste. And I'm gonna rename that guy to be order date dimension. Okay, then I can rename my fields, make it more pertinent to be whether it's ship or order date, like I would want maybe um, uh, this one here to be, uh, you know, rename this to be the ship date. Etc. Uh, I want that to be the ship year. Same thing with order date dimension. I want this to be the order date. And I want current year to be order year. So these are my role playing dimensions. Um, order date, ship date. Okay. Get this filter out of the way. And uh, I want to now just simply join ship date to my sales fact. So I'm gonna create a relationship from here to my sales fact, ship date to ship date, order date relationship to sales fact, order date, order date, match, refresh, we're good, okay. So you can see my star schema is getting nicely built out over here, okay? I'm gonna save this. And also what's a nice feature, I'm gonna go back to my reporting tool to test this out. All I have to do is refresh. Loads the package back up and I'll bring it back in. Well, it should have. <laughs> Live demos, so I did that, save. Uh, 
me save that again. Let me go back out here and, okay, I did bring it in. I just wasn't waiting long enough. There we go. So there's my ship date dimension. And I'm gonna go over here, delete that. I'm gonna do a list. No, oh, we're getting the errors here, folks. I'm gonna close this report down. Gonna go back over here to my um, live webinar and write that report again, create report. Okay, now let's do a list. Okay, so my ship date, I'm gonna bring in a ship year. And I'm gonna bring in uh, order year. And I'm gonna bring in um, for my sales fact, the measures, order quantity. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Um, I actually should have put order year. Let me do that one more time. I'm gonna actually put order year first to make it easier to, to look at. Let me get blue in this room. Order year over here. All right, let's rerun that again. So I'm I'm basically now uh, running a query across two role playing time dimensions. So as you can see, things that were ordered in 2010 had things that were shipped in 2011, the next year, and things that were ordered in 2010 had things that were shipped and also in 2010. Okay, uh, same thing across here. So that shows you the fact that I've been able to slice across two time dimensions with that data module. So going back to the data module, let's clean it up again. And I'm gonna put the time dimension back into my physical layer. I'm gonna go back over here. Now I got ship date, order, product, sales, save. Let's test the uh, Cognos gods and go back to that new report and refresh that. Let's see how fast, now that was faster, that was good, okay. By the way, our instance of this is on Azure. We have Cognos on Azure installed. So I am going to a, go into the cloud and run this. It's pretty snappy, as you can see, just a little side note. So I made my change to data modules real time. I saved it. I went back to my report, refresh data, and now I'm building out my model here. Now I've got a ship date, order date, product dimension, sales fact uh, that I've done fairly quickly in this modeling exercise. Trying to address some of the key issues as you move from framework manager, how do I do, for example, uh, role playing dimensions and namespaces, et cetera. The last topic, we did alias shortcuts, custom table views, and it's always been kind of a head scratcher, And but for those professional modelers or those, those modelers, uh, power users that know how to do this and, and, and framework manager, it's a really important feature to have. This feature did not exist in Cognos data modules, data modules 11.0. It now, it started to exist in 11.1 and it's gotten better through the releases. Determinants in framework manager versus column dependencies. We need determinants when we need to use one time dimension as say the day grain, and we wanna use that same time dimension across multi-grain facts. So for example, uh, I've, the sales fact that I've created is at the date granularity, but I have sales targets at a month level. I wanna be able to do cross joins across those things, across the two cross facts multi-queries with the same time dimension. In Framework Manager, we use determinants, and here's that screenshot. And every time I don't do Framework Manager modeling for a while and I have to look at the determinant screen, I always have to scratch my head and say, how does this work again? It was never really that uh, intuitive. And if you can imagine a end user looking at this screen, they would again probably just throw their hands up in the air and say, this is too hard, right? And that's what we're trying to get away from. Uh, we're not, we want, we want this power to be enabled in the end user's hands. So data modules has simplified this concept with the concept 
of column dependencies. So let's go back over here. And I'm going to bring in another table. Add more tables, select tables, and I'm going to bring in my, look for it, look for it, sales target. There we go. It inherited that relationship. I'm going to get rid of that for the purposes of this demo. Here's my sales target. If we look at this data from the grid view, we have sales targets over here at the grain of year, month, and even at a higher level at product. We could put determinants on product as well. But what I want to do, and again, for the purposes of this demo, I want to be able to use one time dimension, we'll say ship date dimension, across the two, right? If I were to create a relationship to sales target right now, and the grain of sales target is year and period, and I went from ship year to sales year, and current month to sales period, match the selected column and say, okay, right? And say I'm done. The effect is this, I'm gonna save this, go back to my report, refresh, sales target is now there. We're gonna delete this real quickly here. We're gonna create a, a two column report. Over here, I'm gonna create a list and I'm gonna query my sales target table directly. I'm gonna bring in these three guys. Over here, I did a join to my ship date dimension. Uh, and I'm gonna leverage the date field from ship date. Uh, I'm gonna put in the ship year. Let me click off of this. I'm gonna put ship year, uh, current month number. And I'm gonna put in that sales target and insert over there. Let's run that query. All right, so this left one is from the raw, the raw sales fact table by itself. This is the right number. Sales target for January is $57 million, okay? Um, but over here, the sales target was inflated 31 times because the date dimension is at a granularity of a day. So for January, it multiplied it times 31, February, maybe 28, et cetera. So how do I fix that is the question. Let's go back to data modules. I need to be able to create a determinant on the date dimension. And with data modules, we now create column dependencies. If you right click on here, there's an option called specify column dependencies. And this is really easy and very intuitive. So for example, I'm gonna start with ship year. That's the top level. And I'm going to bring in the key for quarter level as the quarter key. And all you have to do is drag the relationship here. So ship goes to quarter, quarter goes to month, and drag it over here, and month goes to day. And one thing about data modules, it does a constant data validation or validation of your model and right away it tells me there's something still wrong if you click on this validation issue and you show the details what it shows you is that there's certain columns in your column dependencies that you have not accounted for current month current quarter month english name if you actually ran a query and included those it wouldn't know what the dependencies are so all we have to do is clean that up so current month uh, number is really an attribute of month key. We'll put that over here. It revalidates and the list is getting smaller. Current quarter is an attribute over here. Okay. And we're down to month EN, which is the month English name or the short abbreviation. And that does, that's going to go over here. And the validation will, will go away. Okay. I've established my column dependencies. There's also a vertical view you can look at, however you feel it's most useful. Okay, so now this, 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 this date dimension is now properly set up. Let's save it. I'm gonna go back into my report. 
I'm going to refresh the data. Let's rerun the report. I was hoping it would come up with the right answer, and it did. <laughs> this being a live demo and all. So you see now, even though I've used a time dimension that's at the day grain across uh, a fact table that's at the month grain, I get the right answer. Okay. And now I can make proper uh, queries with sales fact to get me a multi-grain, a multi-fact query. I'm just going to use quantity for this example. I'm going to put it over here and then run that. It's not going to be really a good comparison on sales target, but let's, I just want to kind of show the, the query information on that. Okay, so that works. What does a query look like for that? For query two, it's a lot of query, but what I want to show you is it has the coalesce statement right here. And that's what's doing two queries against two fact tables using a date dimension and a different grain than one of the fact tables, okay? Go back to my data module, okay? So in the span of really, actually, if I were to do this without talking and if I knew what I was kind of doing, this is really a 15 minute deal, right? And I've kind of addressed some of those issues with Framework Manager, right? So back to my slides over here. To me, that was a lot easier than trying to figure this out and then publishing the package. As you can see here, there's your determinants, uniquely identified, grouped by, uh, what are the attributes for it? You know, very complicated from an end user perspective. Um, so those were the three things I wanted to demo today. The takeaway from this webinar is I hope that you can see that the gap between data module modeling from a professional modeling perspective, from those folks who are constantly used to using framework manager and creating package, that gap is definitely narrowing. Uh, release six with that uh, refresh metadata, but it's a simple button, but I, I, I was working with customers and saying, until I can do that, I am not gonna touch it because I don't wanna be able to have them delete tables and bring things in all, all in mass and redo everything. There's no way I'm gonna put that out into production. I can't, I can't maintain it. Okay, they fixed that, that's done. And that was a huge thing. Um, that's again, this webinar was kind of tailored to the FM folks and to show you what you can or cannot do. You're gonna to have to make your decisions on whether you wanna start that new modeling uh, project with data modules, but I think you should definitely give it a, a, a hard look at first before you think about maybe starting a brand new project with framework manager packages. You go through the list of what it can't do. If you absolutely have to have parameter maps for ling uh, languages, complicated security models, you need object level security for whatever reason, and I think that's going to get fixed soon. Um, then you know you're gonna and you have a deadline. You're gonna have to go back to your framework manager packages, you know. But it allows a lot more functionality, and we didn't really talk about uh, the functionality that end users can use this for. This webinar was more geared for framework manager versus data modules, but there are probably a whole set of customers out there who are bringing coming in maybe Cognos Analytics 11 clean without any of the legacy history of it, and using data modules because that's the modeling tool, you know, and even consultants out there, you're going to have to maybe go on a customer basis where they're going to maybe say, I don't want to use Framework Manager for whatever reason. Use a data modeling tool. But you, you have this crux. You're kind of still leveraging your knowledge on Framework Manager, and you want to be able to take those best practices that you've learned in Framework Manager and possibly go and use it in the new modeling tool. The modeling tool that's going to be enhanced and, and, and all development resources are going to. So that is, I was able to do it at 11.55. Uh, I was a little worried about, those are fairly complex demos uh, with a fairly Pedro. data. So I'll yeah, hand good it stuff. back to Mike. We're, yeah. um, we're, we're moving, we're gonna move pretty quickly here. We might run a little past the top of the hour. <clears throat> Stick around folks though. There's a, there's a million questions, Pedro. So go ahead and uh, take a look at those. You can probably just work them from the top down. Um, if you don't mind running past the top of the hour, people will get into those questions in just a few minutes. 
Uh, before we do, I've got a quick poll in terms of asking you going forward, what do you plan to do in terms of Cognos metadata modeling? And you can select all that apply. So are you going to use Framework Manager, data modules, something like Microsoft Analysis Services, or something else? All right, I'm going to close it and show it. And so it's still two thirds and, and then a whole ton, almost 83, 83% here using data modules and then a smaller percentage of Microsoft and other undecided. All right, thank you very much. So before we get to the, uh, if you could advance the slides a couple there, Pedro, um, to the Got Cognos challenges. So in your organization, one more, if you have uh, if you're suffering from time-consuming data prep or you can't drill down to, from summary to detail, you have performance issues or poor user adoption, we can help you with an architectural assessment that we do that involves best practices modeling. We do a health check on your metadata, performance tuning, um, tips on enabling your self-service culture, and selecting the best tool for the job. For example, using Framework Manager uh, and or data modules as appropriate. So. Um, a little bit about Centurus here. We are the authority in business intelligence. We concentrate our expertise. If you go to the next slide, Pedro, yeah. on business intelligence with a depth of knowledge across the entire BI stack. And next slide, please. Our clients know us for providing clarity from the chaos of complex business requirements, disparate data sources, constantly moving targets, and ever-changing regulatory environments. We made a name for ourselves because of our strength in bridging the gap between IT and the business by delivering solutions that give you access to reliable analysis ready data across your organization, enabling you to quickly and easily get answers at the point of impact in the form of the decisions made and the actions taken. Next slide, our consultants are leading experts in the field of analytics with years of pragmatic real world expertise and experience advancing the state of the art. Everything from front end dashboard reporting and visualization creation through data preparation, all the way through infrastructure, and of course, training and mentoring. We're so confident in our team and our methodology that we back our projects with a 100% money back guarantee that's unique in the industry. We've been doing this for a while, we've been at it for almost two decades, focused exclusively on business intelligence. We work across the spectrum from Fortune 500 to mid-market companies solving business problems across virtually every industry and functional area, including the Office of Finance, Sales and Marketing, Manufacturing, Operations, HR and IT. Our team is both large enough to meet all of your business analytics needs and yet small enough to provide personalized attention. Again, we invite you to visit the Centurus uh, website, the Centurus Resources tab, where you can find uh, all our webinars and the recordings and the deck and everything behind those and all kinds of great uh, information, in our blogs and tips and tricks and everything on that site and bookmark it. Upcoming events, we've got another uh, great webinar coming up on Tuesday, July 28th, same time, same channel. Uh, Cognos Analytics dashboards or reports. So come and visit us for that. And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about our fabulous training. We offer training in the top three, uh, three top BI platforms: IBM Cognos Analytics, Power BI, and Tableau. We're ideal for organizations running multiple platforms or those moving from one to another. And we provide training in many different modes and can mix and match those to meet and suit the needs of your user community. Centurus provides hundreds of free resources on our website, and we've been committed to sharing our BI expertise for over a decade. And now we finally get to the illustrious Q&A. And so as you can see, Pedro, there's a whole ton of questions here. I know we're at the top of the hour, so why don't we try to bang out a few of those. And anyone, um, you can continue to put questions in the question panel here. We do save that question log, and we will answer any questions we're not able to get to um, via that log and we'll post it along with the recording and the deck on centurus.com in that resources section. So go ahead, Pedro, if we want to bang out a few of these, we can, we can do that. Yeah, let's see. Um, I see some, I can't expand this one box, but um, maybe you could address this, Mike, is IBM at least considering, I think it's a migration tool. I don't, I'm, I'm not aware that they are. Um, it's certainly something that we um, in our labs are, uh, actively pursuing um, because we know that it's 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 feasible. Um, so we're looking to do exactly that to help people if they want to migrate from framework manager models to data modules and have some technology to help them with that. So if you're interested in that, that's a need in your organization. Definitely give us a call. Okay. Um, 
Can data modules read synonyms? Well, uh, that's an Oracle question. I think more specifically, as you connect to um, an Oracle database through the data server, um, if it's part of the schema that you're trying to get to, my, my, my initial gut is it does. Uh, I'd have to actually verify that and look at it from an Oracle database and see that it could read the synonym. But if uh, the user that you are logged into can see it, I'm pretty sure the data module can see it. Um, there's what about question. stored procedures? Stored procedures, uh, that's a good one. Uh, there is a way to write, I haven't tried it with stored procedures yet, uh, but you can write manual SQL. And if you can write manual SQL, uh, you can do a create table, and I didn't show this one, uh, create a, a, a manual table with, uh, create a table with manual SQL, you could potentially maybe call a, a store procedure, but I'd have to try that out. That's a good question, sure. Sure, and then they, they someone mentioned about DMR and Framework Manager, can, and I know you can create hierarchies in data modules, that's kind of similar mm -hmm. to that functionality, but not exactly equivalent, right? Not exactly equivalent. I mean, the DMR is a very specific uh, uh, corner section of framework management that you can do, which makes it look exactly like an OLAP cube. Uh, that kind of functionality is not built into data modules. You know, whether it goes in there or not, I'm not sure. We haven't got a read from that on IBM yet. Okay. okay. We had a question about automating the refresh of data modules. I'm not sure exactly what that means necessarily because they're not really. Um, yeah. I think maybe. It might, unless, you, unless you're referring to data sets, or extracts yeah, exactly. that, uh, that can be put into data modules, those things can be uh, automated to be refreshed because you can set, the, set those on a schedule. Uh, it's very easy to do from the user interface. You create your, your data set and you set a property about a schedule and you enable it. And then when, when people hit the data module, which contains the data set, it'll show the most refreshed data. Um, so that's the only thing about refresh that uh, related to data, data modules. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Someone asked about uh, the Centurus Analytics Connector and if it supports data modules. So for those of you uninitiated, we have a product called the Analytics Connector that allows you to use Tableau or Power BI to access your Cognos metadata, so framework manager models, reports, and data modules. So they asked if we supported data modules, and the answer is yes, we do. Um, what about filters on the FM database query subject based on session parameters? Can you replicate that in data modules? And I'm guessing that you can't do that because of the we don't support parameter maps. We don't support parameter maps, but I haven't tried that. It does create a filter with an expression editor, and I've seen that it can reference macro substitutions. Um, so that's something to look into and try. Um, um, we've done, I've done some very complicated things with parameter maps and macro substitutions in FM, like getting to a security table and adjusting the where clause with session parameters based on your ID, the user IDs in the security table, et cetera. Um, I would think that's going to get better. And I know parameter maps are a uh, number one thing they want to add to data modules. But you might want to take a look at the area of filters where you do a filter by uh, an expression editor and see if you could use the macro substitutions to get maybe the session parameters there. And try try to play with it there and see if that will, that 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 satisfies your requirements. Okay, then we'll do one more here, and then we probably have to let people go here. Sure. Your data modules can they do the impact analysis like FM does in terms of determining and showing you impacted reports by mm -hmm. uh, changes that you make? No, not that I'm aware of. Right. So yeah, you're right. Uh, if data modules are being used by a bunch of reports, uh, that particular functionality is not there. Right? Okay. Great. Well, again, we um, we have a ton of questions here. We will save the question log and we'll answer that and post that to the website. If you want to go to the last site, the last slide, Pedro. Okay. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today and thank our speaker, Pedro Eining, for a very informative and information-filled session. Um, on behalf of myself and Centurus, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on uh, one of our upcoming events, Knowledge Series, or you can reach out to us for any of your business analytics needs or training at our website below. You see our 888 number if you're old school and you like to use a phone for calling people. And we have our, of course, you can reach us at info at centurus.com. So thank you very much for your time today and have a great rest of your day. Bye now. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye.